Everyone hear me? Yes. Good. All right. Um, how many people here play video games or have played video games in the past? A few of you. That's good. Um, so as you know, uh, things are emerging in the video game industry now. Um, used to be, back in the day, you would buy the game. If it was good, it would make a sequel to the game. You might buy that too. By the 90s, this idea could expand the game that you've purchased. Um, so you might buy that because more, more of the game that you like is better. Um, in the last 10 years or so, what has emerged is kind of a more seamless version of that idea. Um, kind of the micropayment scheme of how to distribute a game. Um, this is most common really in smartphone games where you buy the core kernel of the game and then you keep paying money for extra little bits over time. So the game is never really finished. And if you're interested in making a special collection of video games, um, and some of the target video games are these microtransactional games, uh, comes this open question of when is the represent, uh, representation of that game complete? Uh, so that was kind of the question we were trying to ask ourselves, is what is this additional content stuff? How does it contribute to the metadata records and to the retrieval scenarios? Um, so we had a good think about it over some copies. Um, and we kind of identified three different things that are happening. So there are expansions where you're just getting more of the game, right? Uh, Civilization V. It's a popular game. It's uh, essentially you get to play God with a bunch of different empires over time. Um, and they've expanded it. Here it's their Gods and Kings expansion, adds features like religion, adds more cultural groups, so more. That's not the only thing that's happening. Sometimes you have the downloadable content, also known as DLC. Um, sometimes this is promotional. Uh, like the image here is showing, right? I buy a strategy guide and suddenly I can download extra characters for my game. Um, other things you see is extra levels, pay money for extra costumes for characters. There's still one more thing going on because folks who play games also are frequently programmers. Um, and you know what's great about Star Trek Armada? It's Star Trek. But wouldn't it be better if we had more Borg, right? So clever players are like, well, we understand how this game is made. We can just add more con to it, uh, content to it ourselves. So the other thing we have to deal with are mods. Um, so kind of going into the challenges this presents for cataloging, right? It comes out a question of like, how are we going to acquire it? How are we going to describe it? we ensure some level of access and preservation. And then there's kind of some of the philosophical challenges. So going into the acquisition challenges, right? Some of the things we have to think about is how is it distributed? Uh, discs, uh, physical media we have to purchase, digital distribution. Um, that presents some problems of like, how are we gonna record the transactions of that we've spent taxpayers' money on this, or we spent our uh, funders money on this. Um, what happens when they do updates? Uh, especially, so a lot of platform-based games for PlayStation, Xbox have very silent updates. Um, we just turn it on, go to play your game, and it says, I need to download an update, and just kind of does that in opaque fashion, where the user kind of has no input, they just let it update, and then they can play. Um, of course, the dependencies um, back in the 90s and 80s, especially, uh, was not unusual. You would actually install the game on your PC. You would still need to insert the disk into the disk drive because the key that would unlock the game and let the computer run it was only on that disk. Um, and other games are just kind of specific to platforms. Uh, our games are only for Xbox, games are only for PlayStation. Games are only for PC. Um, it's kind of like 
how do we develop our collection criteria, right? Expansions for games, it seems like, yes, we should probably do that. There's not actually a lot of them, uh, especially now that everything is kind of heading into this DLC microtransaction phase. Um, the expansions are usually very large additive uh, packages of content. Um, seems like we could get those in scope. DLC is a lot more questionable. Um, so much of it, when do we stop? When, when do we say when, right? When, are, when is the user satisfied? Um, and then there's the mods, which are very large community-based efforts. Um, it's a whole nother, like, order of magnitude for the numbers of quantities of things can be added on the game. We really want to say yes, that we should be reporting information about those. Maybe not. Um, as to the descriptive challenges, uh, the folks that make the, the extra add-ons are frequently different than the folks that made the original game. How to report the credits. Um, how do we uh, accommodate the existing standards? Right? Things like Fervor, Mark, RDA, these are kind of optimized for bibliographic entities not really well suited for video games particularly, but other things that are kind of performance based, they're not very good at. Um, how to express relationships among the games and their additional contents, right? Um, <laughs> we don't always understand exactly what changes the additional content is making to the game. Um, and in turn, and we can't actually tell the end user what to expect when they go looking for the additional content to go along with the game, right? And of course, there's the versioning issues I've kind of already uh, mentioned. Um, and there's the access, use and preservation challenges, of course. Um, if you've ever uh, heard any of Jerry McDonough's talks on preserving virtual worlds, you know some of the problems of hardware life cycles, right? Um, Operating systems go away, hardware goes away, and then sometimes we're left with these odd choices of, are we gonna build an emulator? Are we gonna try and purchase this old equipment and make it run again? How do we make it available to the end users? Um, of course, storage media has its life cycles. CDs, surprisingly, don't last as long as magnetic tape. Um, cloud storage, we don't actually know how long that will last. Um, and there are certain copy kind of protection barriers that we're come to. Um, just because we could build an emulator doesn't mean we have the rights to build an emulator. And of course, there are also philosophical challenges. Um, when is the work complete versus incomplete? That's kind of one of the whole points of the additional content model. Right, if I have to keep buying pieces, when do I ever have the whole game? Um, and there's also this idea of a work derivative work boundary. Uh, it's especially true for mods. If I mod a game, at what point have I in fact just invented a new game? So Dota is a classic example. This is built on the World of Warcraft. Um, but so vastly different from World of Warcraft. It's really its own game, and everybody really talks about it as though it were its own game. Um, so the solution we're working with is we built a conceptual model that tries to encapsulate and represent video games better than a traditional mark record would, um, focusing on specific aspects uh, that are really particular to the video game media. Um, and for the additional content problem, we have our own content container for that. For complements, some local version of the game is distributed in various ways, physically and electronically. <coughs> Uh, it has some core properties that we think are important. It's a name, what kind of content is it? Uh, version requirements, this is especially important for mods because mods can have dependencies on one another. So if I want to run uh, uh, an extra civilization mod, I might be required to have additional mods that change additional game features. kind of where we're going with this. Um, we, of course, we can capture additional content in, with regards to video games. And in that context, kind of examining um, this problem in other media types. 
Um, I think this might be a burgeoning problem for digital publications, right? If I'm an author on Kindle or any of the other EPUB uh, platforms, but it's to stop me from selling chapters piecemeal to you. Uh, if we're going to like, collect these books for libraries, at which point do we stop getting the book? If the author just keeps writing chapters forever, um, what if they sell artwork to go with the books separately? Um, a bunch of scenarios uh, for academic papers. Um, I know humanists are interested in author networks, so. <laughs> Uh, I get information about the collaborator narrators, and I'm the big silo of academic papers. Can I sell this, this idea of the author's network separately to researchers that are interested? What about their data sets? If they upload the data set, can I sell that separately? Can I do my own visualizations for their data sets and sell those as added value features? Um, and the question for us as librarians is, if we know those features are available and we think our users are interested in them, how can we provide access to that? So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you Question. very much. Awesome. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, all I can think of is that you need to be getting the gaming community themselves working on these problems. Does anybody have any questions? For, uh, over here? Yes. I, I think this is a, a really interesting paper and an interesting problem. I'm curious when you uh, try to uh, anatomize what you capture, uh, are you looking at games? Are you ever talking to game creators? Game um, so uh, we're doing some conceptual analysis among ourselves, and we were working off surveys that have been done to gaming communities and also to game designers. Um, so we're leveraging several years of work that SIM and University of Washington has been doing in this area. And it's still a problem. <clears throat> I'm, uh, so I think things are going to become more microtransaction-like in the future and not less. Like, I would ex actually expect we'll be buying books chapter by chapter. It'll kind of go back almost to... Uh, the way it was before the 80s were serialized fiction was kind of more normal. See them in more magazines and periodicals. Thank you. Uh, yes? Um, so this is definitely not the case for every possible game, but I know that for many of the more popular ones, uh, sometimes canonical collections emerge, even from the game publisher. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Yes. Uh, so I, I'm a big fan of the Civilization games. I know that the Game of the Year edition of Civ 5 includes all of these DLCs. Yes. Yeah. So it's wondering how much you're going to do. Yeah. And similarly, I guess for mods, you get these sort of mod packs that include this yes. list of mods. Think, um, so that's yeah. one of the good things that the mining community is usually good about when they have mods that have tendencies on one another, we we'll usually package it. Um, we have this NC called a collection that is designed to kind of capture that. So that addresses the, the, the mods and also the sort of yeah, it's designed to group the additional content and local releases together in one big distribution package. So this way we look at it is when you're collecting them, it's about the idea is to you're distributing it. Um, and then there's the individual members that in, in the packages being distributed. I was wondering, but what's the differences and uh, similarities <coughs> between uh, games and software? Software are also things uh, sold as piecemeal and they got updated uh, very frequently. Right, so it has um, some similar so similarities and differences. Uh, I'll get to the differences first. Um, so our approach is kind of focusing on the user's perspective of a video game. So it's this kind of artistic, interactive thing that they're dealing with, frequently has narrative <laughs> components. Um, and so that's what we're trying to capture with this representation. There's definitely also the software side where, um, can of course, I can use different codes um, to make the same representation. Um, we're not capturing that with this model. So, but it is an issue, and kind of also, um, especially on platforms, because the versioning of the software is opaque. Emails with some of the folks that distribute the games, 
don't keep records of their updates. The update is deployed and then kind of filed away somewhere. And then it's just kind of like, well, we need to work on the next update. So it's poorly, it's very poorly um, archived exactly how the updates are deployed and what changes are being made frequently. Any other questions? Come on, gamers, any other questions for, uh, for Jeff? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jeff, and could we say thank you to all of our presenters?